Mark and Debbie have been involved in many different pioneering aspects. Uh, there's a lot of pioneering things going on in the realm of worship this, these days. And you guys have been actively involved in worship for how many years? Just before we were married, which was uh, 37 years ago, and both of our families were involved in worship and pioneering, uh, church planning, uh, th that kind of endeavors. Way, right. way when we were even early, early childhood. Mm -hmm. Both of your parents were parents. Uh, well, yeah, of course, they were parents. <laughs> they were parents. Yeah, that works out well. <laughs> both of your parents were in the ministry. Yes, with yes. PKs. Yeah. And both of our dads, our, our parents really had a heart for worship. They loved music, and we just grew up in a worship atmosphere. Right. They they instilled in you this this desire to to get into worship, mm -hmm. and and the results of it. They modeled it. They loved it. They had worship in, uh, on the heart level. Uh, they didn't just uh, assent to it as being an important part of a religious experience. They were worshipers themselves. Right. Both of our dads were really God seekers, God chasers. Loved encounter, loved presence, and really raised us in such a way that um, we hungered after the presence ourselves. And if we hear something was happening across the states, we'd all end up there, just even as children growing up. And that's kind of how we raised our own kids yeah. too, just a hunger after Jesus. I, I call that chasing the holy haunting. <laughs> yeah, there, there's something out there that you go after. Yeah. And both of your fathers were actually spiritual fathers to many, mm -hmm. shepherding. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, Debbie, your your father was a spiritual father to a young man he saw a lot of potential in, a guy named Mike Bickle. Yeah, that's correct? right. That's right. So um, your history with Mike Bickle, who later became director of the International House mm -hmm. of Prayer, which has affected thousands and thousands and thousands of lives across the globe, um, kind of began his... or. In, continued his journey mm -hmm. underneath the ministry of your father. Uh, he was the youth pastor there, correct? Yeah, yeah, youth pastor, junior pastor, kind of how they, they described it right. back in the day. And he's, he's still kind of a youth pastor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh, so what is your involvement with, with Mike and then leading into the house of prayer? Well, it starts about 38 years ago before... Uh, Mike and his wife Diane were married, or before Debbie and I were married, uh, we were all on the same church staff with uh, Debbie's father. Uh, Debbie was the secretary, I was worship leader, and he was the uh, junior pastor, younger associate pastor of the staff. And so uh, that was a very, very uh, powerful time in church history, uh, certainly in our history, but it was mm -hmm. at the height of the charismatic renewal and so there are lots of dynamic uh, spiritual things happening in those days. It was uh, really electrifying and uh, quite captivating to see a move of God be uh, not only effervescent, but uh, 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 magnetic. It, it drew people just mm -hmm. uh, from all, of, all walks of life. Right. Mm -hmm. The community aspect of what you guys did, um, can you expound on that a little bit? You know, I've heard your stories over the years, but what type of community did you just see evolve around you? Well, when hearts come alive, that changes everything. When hearts come alive with a passion for the presence, mm -hmm. when hearts come alive to God really loves me, that just changes everything. From a sterile, stuffy, stale, religious gathering or meeting, now it becomes a spontaneous and sometimes unpredictable uh, experience of hearts being exposed, sometimes raw, uh, but uh, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, which that's what we always, of course, aspire to, uh, he always brings good out of it. And uh, so we've just had some amazing, amazing testimonies from uh, signs and wonders, and I don't apologize saying that. I have no reservation. Signs and wonders, miracles happen, uh, change lives. And uh, in those early days, we saw national and international ministries get birthed right out of that movement where Mike and we were all involved in the uh, middle 70s. Mm -hmm. Right. What, what, 
but I've seen the stories and heard the stories from you guys and heard the stories from Mike Bickle as he's, as he's preaching, that there was this community of young believers who knew there was something more, had no clue what the mm-hmm. something more was, but um, launched out into a, a prayer movement that is uh, unprecedented, unlimited, and surrounds the globe. Uh, can you give me just a synopsis of what it was like to step into what we know as IHOP now, mm-hmm. but the very beginnings of that? Well, um, let me preface that to, by saying this. Uh, in the early 80s, there was a prophetic word that, uh, you know, you never know whether you can believe this prophetic word, you know, but it said there will be a 24-7 house of worship and prayer in South Kansas City. And, uh, well, the it didn't happen for 16 years. But when it did happen, it happened in unprecedented fashion. Uh, the fact is we don't know of anybody uh, else having a, a 24-7 house of prayer where real live worship is going on 24 hours a day uh, for, at this point now, it's 15 years in existence. And uh, now it's not unprecedented in history. Uh, there have been several times right. where it's happened in history, but... Uh, Currently, anyway, we just, uh, when we began to watch it emerge, our hearts uh, rose to the occasion because that original prophecy back in the 80s was over us also that we'd be a part of it. And it was over our children. And so here our children were just really little. In fact, in the, you know, early days, let's see, how old would Lydia have been? I don't know. She wasn't even born then. We just had um, two or three young ones at that time. And um, they, it was prophesied that they were going to be a part of it too. It's like... It just seems so far away at that point, but sure enough. That's but 16 exactly years later now, the kids are teens. Uh, one of them was late teens, and we uh, moved back from Wisconsin at the mm-hmm. time to back to Kansas City to be a part of the International House of Prayer. And, uh, um, and it was so exciting because, you know, when we went 24-7, which was September 99, um, there'd be times we'd be laying in bed at midnight and, you know, some parents may wonder where their kids are in the night. Our kids were over the hill at IHOP. You know, they were doing a session at midnight hour or something. That was pretty exciting to be a part and to have our kids be a part of something so wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I really feel there's something on that, to, uh, of knowing that your kids are immersed in the very presence of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were your kids, and the Bickles kids, mm-hmm. and the Myers kids, mm-hmm. and, and and a whole many others were were just, as Mark puts it, marinating mm-hmm. in in this in this presence of God. And then a whole bunch of other kids came in mm-hmm. later later teens and early twenties and began to feed into this thing that uh, now has exploded mm-hmm. with with great results. Mm-hmm. All the prayer meetings I'd been in from a youth on up to that current day, 2000 about, had been primarily fueled by older people. You know, wizened veteran saints who've got this bless God we're going to go on through to the end, you know, kind of thing, and they're able to kind of punch out a prayer meeting. The phenomenon that happened in this occasion, in around 2000 when uh, House of Prayer was birthed, uh, was that it was fueled primarily by young people. Mm-hmm. Well, when, of course, we have young people uh, at, that, at that date, we had, uh, you know, our children were teens. And so uh, let me just speak to the parents just a second. Um, you, as a parent, uh, probably get frustrated being the cop in your house. And I think that there's probably a better way than just being a cop. Well, what happens if, as a parent, we choose to put our children in an environment where our children love the people they're alongside. Right. They're inspired by the people they're alongside. They're inspired by their peers, and they're inspired by their mentors. Well, that was just exactly the condition and the environment that happened here at IHOP. Our children were musical, and so when they got around other musical young people, well, they just grew like weeds. <laughs> yeah, Spiritually, really skill-wise, and music. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe personality and character issues mm-hmm. uh, were strongly uh, fortified and strengthened as a result of being in an environment where mom and dad now don't have to be the cop all the time. Right. Uh, the fact is now mom and dad uh, are happy that 
the children's influencers in their life, their peers and mentors, mm -hmm. are wanting, are giving influence along the same direction that mom and dad want the children to go. So when, so when this God-given talent, as we might say, or gifting, is, is awakened, and then there are mentors, uh, strongly by the parents and strongly by those who are around them, then there are tremendous results, right? I think so. I don't believe there's ever a guarantee. Right. But what it does is it certainly uh, fortifies our desires as a loving, caring parent. We, our desires are we want our children to be raised in an atmosphere where their hearts get awakened to God and established in God, understand the ways of God. And so it certainly goes a long ways that direction mm -hmm. when we put them in an environment that's steeped with and teeming with uh, the presence of God. Exactly. As, as a re result of the way your children have been raised, I've had the privilege of watching them plug into society, uh, into, uh, and you, you can't separate the holy from the unholy when, when, when we're talking about doing God's work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all holy. And so, real briefly, can you start from the very top oldest to the youngest, where they're plugged in and what they're doing in, in the world? Sure. Um, our son Marcus and his wife Allison and their young baby, they are in Franklin, Tennessee, involved with a great church there, um, uh, Grace Church. Center Church. Grace Center Church. And um, he's on staff there, is their tech guy, also helps with worship and has a heart for worship. Marcus has also um, produced many, many albums um, from the beginning IHOP days, um, some of the very first album IHOP albums have come out of our studio and our home, and um, all of our boys a part of that. And so Marcus was kind of a, a forerunner in that. Um, Luke and his wife Sarah live out in Redding, and Redding, they're California. Redding, California, and they're involved with Bethel Church um, on staff there, and um, they are both on staff there, and they are. Um, involved in with Bethel Music, and Luke does all the live streaming for Bethel, and also um, travels some with Bethel Music. Doing their, he's on a tour right now actually, and um, Sarah is involved with Bethel Music also, and uh, then um, the next one, John. John and Cheryl live with their three young children here in Kansas City, and um, he runs the studio here full-time, and also does, all of our kids have also been involved in other studios, so not just ours, but they do stuff with IHOP, they do stuff with several other local studios, and um, uh, John, he does a lot of producing here, he also is a drummer, and so he does um, drum lessons, so um, the house is very active with people coming and going with musicians and, and different students coming in and out going, and he, all of the kids just love um, the presence, love worship, love being hanging with people who are like-minded, such. And um, then Chris and Lydia, our daughter Chris and her husband Lydia, they live out in Reading, and she's on staff. You mean your, you mean your daughter Lydia and her husband Chris? Oh, did I say it backwards? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> our daughter right. Lydia and her husband Chris, yes, live out in Reading, California. And um, they are very involved out there. And Lydia also helps with worship many times. And she's one of the main keyboardists out there. She also is involved in their school. Um, has also done the school out there, the BSSM school, the Supernatural School of Ministry school. And so they're all very involved in, in worship and on the forefront, just whatever God's doing in the world, man, they all want to be in the middle of it. Yes. And Thankfully, they are. Thank you, Jesus. So somewhere along the line, you guys decided to hook into what the Lord has gifted you with and hook into others with that same gifting. And you raised a family in that atmosphere, and now you, you have four children who mm -hmm. are globally affecting the world. Mm -hmm. You know, from, from starting off with Forerunner Music mm -hmm. uh, and, and their own recording studios, recording things that many of us have heard. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. one of your first albums, your CDs, 24-7, uh, impacted us long before we ever knew you guys. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Luke, who's, who's doing the live streaming across the world. 
Uh, John producing albums that are going across the world. Lydia, her face is on, on Bethel worship many mm -hmm. times, playing the keyboards for, for some of the top worship mm -hmm. leaders there. Um, what's next? Mm -hmm. We are grateful that... Grandkids? Uh, yes. <laughs> the next, next generation. generation. <laughs> We're grateful that all the uh, four children and their spouses are uh, running hard after God yeah. and strongly established uh, in walking after God. Um, and you're right, they are coloring and shaping the very sound of worship on a global scale. I mean, here at IHOP, they've all been involved with this. And uh, John still is, and that goes out across the globe. Uh, Luke and Sarah and Lydia and Chris are involved with Bethel Music, and uh, literally, uh, that's probably right up there with the premier shapers of what worship sounds like on the globe today. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's an amazing blessing, certainly not uh, uh, all attributable to us, but I think the Lord gave us some wisdom along the way, as he does every parent, gives the nuggets of wisdom to know how to put our kids in an environment where that environment will instill in them things that we as a parent can't do. Mm -hmm. If we're, as a parent, think that we're the sole influencers or shapers of our child, uh, we will, I believe, run out soon, and that's why we need the rest of the body of Christ. And so we're grateful that uh, various other Spiritual influences have uh, uh, certainly been harmonious and supportive of uh, where we aspire our kids to walk into. Right, mm -hmm. right. You guys are both great spiritual parents. Uh, you know, we're coming into a generation where now we're spiritual grandparents mm -hmm. and raising up a whole other generation of spiritual parents. So I'm going to ask: Would would you would you say a blessing over those who are listening to this podcast who who just who who are entering into this journey yeah. or who? partway through the journey. Yeah. Well, just one more nugget of wisdom, and I'd okay. be happy to do that. Um, if you were to travel to Russia and try to put, uh, use your, our dollars in their marketplace, now in a black market that might work, but out on the open market, you would have trouble because our currency, even though it's valuable to us, doesn't register in their market system. Likewise, in our children, each one of our children's hearts and lives have a certain currency, so to speak, that their heart relates to, registers with, and values. And that may or may not be the same currency that we value in our own hearts. So it's important that we evaluate what is the, the, the I'll use the word again, currency that's unique to each child. And then as a parent, we have to go about uncovering that, uh, nurturing that, identifying that, fanning the flames so that each child doesn't get conformed and squeezed into just the parental box or sameness of the parent. Now, the core values, of course, are going to be probably nearly the same. But the uniqueness of how that works out has to be determined by the uniqueness of the child. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wish I'd been listening to this uh, 40 years ago. <laughs> but uh, We learn as we go. Yeah, yes, we, we do. do. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd be happy to speak a blessing. Oh, Lord, we thank you that uh, you are the great shepherd, and then you've given us to be under shepherds to this next generation. And so, Lord, I just speak over each one of the parents and parents-to-be who are listening, that their hearts would be uh, inundated, overcome, uh, like the word marinated, in an awareness of what you're saying to the generation right here ahead of us. And that you give us wisdom, divine unction, ability to impart anointings, wisdom to know how to steer and where to encourage and affir affirm. You've got to be able to bring forth the unique word of God yes. and the people of God in this next generation in such a way that it fulfills your heart, makes your heart happy. So yes, this next generation is walking in all of the design, all the de de uh, intentions of my heart because wise moms and dads sought me first, loved me more than their own comfort zones 
and nurtured the next generation mm -hmm. into uh, this unique time and place in history. We bless these parents and parents-to-be, Lord. We bless the children. Yes. God, that their hearts be uh, um, uniquely uh, open and vulnerable, even eager to find the presence and walk in it and, and the, with all their heart. We commit these things to your care. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you, Debbie and Mark Hingerson, for giving us of your time. I'm sure there'll be lots more times when we sit down and do this again. Looking Thanks. forward to it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Gerald. Bless you. You've been listening to the Next Gen Worship Podcast. For more information about Next Gen Worship and to listen to other podcast episodes, visit nextgenworship.com.